Hi, it's Jen from Shabby Fabrics back with the Easy Piece Table Runner for March. I had so much fun coloring this project because it has all the beautiful colors of spring, which in here in North Idaho, we are really looking forward to spring and all of the fresh colors that come out with all the blooming flowers. So when I saw Ombre Confetti, which of course has been out by Moda for quite some time, I had to grab it and it just made for such a fun block because here, while that looks like it's two separate fabrics, it's the same fabric. We're going to grab a piece from the darkest part of our ombre as well as the lightest part and put our blocks together so it looks sophisticated, it's beautiful, it's fresh, and I just think it looks like something I would definitely want to be putting on my kitchen table to welcome in, of course, the beginning of spring. So we use three different colors. Again, this is the same piece of fabric, just cutting in different positions for all three of those blocks. So let's jump right into it. If you're just finding this video, you're not even familiar with the series, there's 12 in the series, one for every month. This is the second to the last in the series. Be, April will be the last. So be sure to go to the Shabby Fabrics homepage. At the bottom is a link that says free downloads. Click that and you'll go right to the page where you'll be able to download the Easy Pea Table Runner for this month, all the other months, and you'll see all of the other downloads for other programs from Wool, DIY, and of course, plenty of piecing projects as well. So be sure to grab that. You'll get several pages from the download that'll include full color instructions as well as diagrams. You'll have four diagrams. Two will be for reverse for di uh, reversed, it says reverse diagram, and you'll just want to make sure you tape those together, and you'll have two that are for your assembly diagram. Now, if you're purchasing the Shabby Fabrics kit, the coolest part about that, besides the fact that we've cut out all of the shapes for you that are applique, they have a heat and bond light on the back, so when you get your kit, when you get to the step of putting the applique together, you're not even going to use this reverse diagram because you're not going to be tracing, you're not going to be cutting and doing all those steps. We've taken care of it for you. You can jump right into the fun and you'll be using only the layout, actually assembly diagram. Assembly diagram lay and uh, layout diagram are synonyms, they're the same thing. Uh, in this case, we call it an assembly diagram. So if you are getting the kit, just you can breeze on past the reverse diagram and also in your kit you don't need to worry about downloading this because we put a copy of that pattern in your kit for you so you don't have to worry about that okay so if you're quilting from home or maybe you kind of want to see how this all works um, quilting from home with your own fabrics how you would use an ombre maybe you're going to be using your own ombre or how we used ours is like I said right in the beginning the pattern has us cut six cream squares of the same cream. This is a beautiful grunge that we use from Moda. Six of those to seven and a half inches square because that fabric is going to be happening in every single one of our blocks. From the ombres though, we'll be cutting one seven and a half inch square from the darkest part and one seven and a half inch square from the lightest part of your fabric. And of course, this is the piece that you'll be getting in your kit. So try not to grab in that middle portion. That can just be put in your stash used for maybe a scrap quilt down the road. So we've cut those out ahead of time. Here's your darkest fabric and there's your lightest fabric. I just love just that beautiful gradient. So you'll take one of your white. Now with the grunge, one thing I did when I was putting these blocks together is uh, when I was first sewing them, I accidentally used the wrong side of the fabric and I didn't realize it. So if you're getting the kit, just make sure you're identifying what's the correct side. It's got that more of that kind of, well, the grunge, the kind of scratchy part. That part will be right sides together with your colored fabric. And you've got two choices here. You can either draw a line corner to corner, sewing a quarter inch on either side of that line, or if you want to use the Fonz and Porter tool, which is wonderful, it's got the nice strong yellow dash line. You'll just place that diagonal to diagonal, and I just draw a line. Now, I like this tool because I'm more accurate sewing on a line than trying to sew next to a line. But this is your preference. Either way will give you the same size of half square triangles, which is what we're going for. Okay, so that's drawn. 
And before I move anything away, let's just put a couple pins and we're going to head over to the sewing machine and we're just going to sew down one side and up the other. Let me make sure my iron is heating up because we're going to be coming right back to that. All right, let's head over to the sewing machine. So I lift and I just pull and pivot and come right back down this side. Okay, so far pretty straightforward, right? Uh, let me grab a ruler and I will cut that seam. Looks like I have just a little ruler with me today. That's fine. You're just looking for cutting those blocks apart and we'll press, we'll go ahead and press to the dark as you would suspect and you'll do the same thing with your other ombre confetti square that's in the light. Let's set that seam. I'm so glad that Moda has gone forward and printed this ombre confetti fabric for as long as they have. And if you love this fabric too, we would love to hear from you. We'd love to pass your comments on to Moda to encourage them to just keep printing this fabric because as time goes on, I feel like I find more and more projects where just adding that fabric, just add something special to the finished uh, quilt. Just that little extra bit of pop and color that I love. Now you'll of course end up with those little dog ears which I like to trim away because we're going to be making a big pinwheel and I don't want anything extra entering into that equation because there's a lot of bulk coming together in the center of a pinwheel. Anyway, you don't want anything extra that's not needed. Okay. So we'll do the same thing with our light fabric. I'm going to repeat that process. And when I come back, this will be all done. I'm going to draw my line just like I did before. But now you know what I'm doing. When I come back, I'll have that pressed out as well. And we're going to lay out our pinwheel. And then we're going to sew that together. Then we'll start cutting our block rotating and spinning it around and we're going to be having that block go together in no time. I'll be right back. So I have two of my dark half square triangles, two of my light, and the next step in the pattern, and this is an important step, has you, it says important, trim each half square triangle to seven inches square. Now off camera I trimmed these to seven inches square, but I'm going to do that with you right now so you can just see how I do that, if that's something that is completely new to you, or maybe you've been squaring up blocks so long, you're like, that is so old hat, Jen. I don't need to watch you square up a block. But, you know, I never know who our audience is, so I just so that if you are new. What I like to do in that instance is kind of lay the block out so that I'm kind of seeing maybe I'm already at seven. Maybe I really don't need to square up. And I see I'm just a little bit over on some side. So what I do is I try to position it where I get to trim a little bit off of all four sides versus just one side or two sides. So I've kind of positioned it such that we're going to start here. This is one of the reasons I love my spinning mat. And so I don't have to pick up the block. Once I start trimming, I just rotate the block around and then I move my ruler because as you can imagine each time you lift the block up and put it back down it's not going to go back down in the exact same position so measurements start getting just a little bit off or you spend such a great deal of time trying to reposition it exactly where it was so this spinning mat gosh is just your friend you'll see as I put the block together how much I continue to use the spinning mat. Okay, so now our block is all squared up to seven inches. And as I said, the other ones are as well. I did that off camera before I came back. Okay, 
So this next step has us laying that out. And I wanted to point out that your two light blocks will be opposite each other. This is the one we're on right now, step six. And your two dark blocks will be opposite of each other. And that's what's going to give you that nice effect. So you'll lay that out, confirm you have what you're seeing in the photo. And as you would expect, right sides together, right sides together. And see how they nest so nicely because you press to the dark each time. You see that? That seems going this way and that seems going this way. Let's just put a pin right down that seam. I'm going to put another one right over here. Now on this one, this is the point that's so important to me because you want a pinwheel to always come together in the center, right? Because if a pinwheel is off in the center, you really notice it. So rather than ending with that, I'm going to start with that. So what that means is I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to sew from th here, making sure again, I have nice pretty interlocking seams, putting a pin in here and here. And let's head over to that sewing machine again. Let's see how we did here. Now at this step, before we press toward the dark, right? Now we have to make a decision. And what I like to do in this instance when I have bulk to the left and bulk to the right, you can see pressing here, there'd be a lot of bulk going that way. Pressing here is a lot of bulk. So in that instance, I like to press open and evenly distribute that bulk side to side. It seems to just help the block lie a little bit flatter. Okay, I'll just hold that down there. And again, this wool pressing mat, what, one of the things I also love about it is I can put my iron off to the side for just a bit. I don't have to be continually putting it back in the cradle or with a different style of iron propping it up. The wool pressing mat can take a lot of heat. Of course, you're not going to leave it there, you know, forever. But you don't need to worry about pushing it just off to the side for a moment while you're opening a seam. All right, let's do the same thing. Preheat that seam helps to s helps just to make it a little more pliable. Go in the direction I want it to go. All right, there we have our two halves, and you can see right there and right there as I place them right sides together. And I kind of just take a little peek, make sure everything is lined up, and that's where I will pin first. That seam is our most important seam, or our most important location on the seam, because if that doesn't come together right, I'm going to be seam ripping. And it's very easy for that to slide off from that if it's not nicely secured. Even if you kind of want to brace that on either side with another pin so it's not moving as you come into it, that's fine. Do whatever works best for you, but start off by pinning that place. Now let's go ahead and sew again.
Now I wanted to point out something. You see that right there? If my stitch goes right through this intersection, I know I've grabbed a quarter inch seam. doing with this one. <laughs> it's always kind of, how'd it go? Do we have a nice point there? We do. I think that worked out really nicely. And again, we are going to open that seam, distribute that bulk evenly. There's a lot of fabric coming together there, right in the middle. So pressing those seams open helps reduce or distribute evenly, I guess I would say, the bulk. All right, there is our block to begin our process. So now, what is next in our pattern? We have our pinwheel put together, that's step six. Step seven says measure and cut two and a quarter inches from center seams. Let's grab our longer ruler. This is one of my favorite rulers. I'm gonna take a little bit of space. <laughs> Let me move some stuff to the side. So this is a two and a half inch by 24 and a half inch ruler. So two and a quarter inches this is one of the other cool things about Krita Grids. Let me show this to you against the paper. Hopefully you can see it. See that dashed line right there? That is a quarter of an inch. So if I line up my center seam along that dashed line, I know I am at two and a quarter. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. And I'm going to cut. Notice I'm, my block isn't really even lined up with my cutting mat. I'm only lining up with my ruler. We will cut two and a quarter inches each time, not disturbing our block, and simply rotating. That one came apart when I moved it. Lift up more gently. There we go. And one last cut. Okay. And let's rotate that back so that it looks like our diagram. So now we've just accomplished step seven. Step eight is what this is going to look like. So let me just separate that so you can see how that matches step eight. The blocks that are outlined in the blue are what rotates. So the only thing that actually doesn't rotate is the center. Everything else will do a rotation. So this will come here. You're just going to, re you're just going to make these fit what you're seeing here. Kind of a cool shuffle, isn't it? I love stuff like this. It's so fun. So that comes down, that comes here. So now let's make sure everything looks just like this. Let's put it all back together. I can't tell you how many blocks I've sewn together wrong because I got in a hurry and I didn't confirm with my layout. So it looks like everything is where it should be. Now, once everything is laid out, sew units together in rows. So, right side together, right side together, right side together, pressing seams open. You'd open that back up. Of course, you would be sewing this to that, this to that, this to that. So these will all be attached. This is a row, that's a row, that's a row. Sew your rows together 
to make one complete block, again, pressing your seams open. And this is what your finished block will look like. It's so beautiful. Let me just pick this up, show you what your block is going to look like. It's so, so pretty with that ombre. That's what your finished block looks like. And you will, of course, repeat that for the limey green as well as the peach. You'll be making a total of three blocks. And you'll simply sew those together in the arrangement of your choice. You might like a different arrangement than what we chose. You might want the magenta in the middle, the green toward the end, however you want to do that. And then, of course, we'll come to the applique portion of the project. And that's where, if you've got the kit, all of your shapes will be cut out for you um, that are the applique. Step one will be putting your background uh, together with your, let me bring that out right now so you can just see what I'm talking about. Our first step was to get our background, so our grass to it, so our sky to it. And we used our uh, light box, let me move these things out of the way, and our new, and oh, my absolute favorite, new applique pressing sheets called Fusion View. I love this, and it works beautifully with wool as well. So I get my wafer one light box. You'd put your assembly diagram below, and you start laying your pieces out on top of the applique pressing sheet. And of course, you would have this out of the way at this point. Your spinning mat would not be used. You would have this maybe in front of you and your wool pressing mat off to the side. Let me just move some of this out of the way so you can see how this actually would work. You want to have a hot iron ready to go, not in the hottest setting, but usually on a wool setting is about right. So you will, we went ahead and pre-assembled our little tulips and the stems and made that unit. We pre-assembled the crocuses, of course our duck and our bird, and we brought those to the background as one unit. If that's new to you, we've covered how to use applique pressing sheets in previous videos where you're pre-assembling the applique pieces into units and moving them back onto the background as a completed assembled unit, which of course increases accuracy. And so the shapes look like they're supposed to look um, in the finished project. So once you have those units and you move them to the background, that's where if you want to buy that coordinated thread set, we have that available for you. And you would just be stitching all the shapes down with a thread, of course, that matches that fabric. You'll do that for both ends. And go ahead and sew those to the ends of your pieced units. And then you'll go ahead and quilt the project. So I cannot believe we're already to the final month coming up which is the Easy Piece Table Runner for April. So I'll see you next month for that. I hope you're enjoying the series. Give us some feedback. We're here for you. Appreciate you watching. I'll see you next time.